welcome to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center podcast. We hope that this message will strengthen and encourage you. Now here's a word from Pastor Jen Cobray. Stand on your feet. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. And let's just pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, giving you all praise, all the glory, all the honor, how good it is to be in the house of the Lord. We are grateful people, Father. Grateful for your love, mercy, grace. Grateful, Father, for your hand upon us, directing us and guiding us and guarding us. We're a blessed people. But Lord, we haven't come to hear from a man tonight. We've come to hear from the teacher of the church, the Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Touch us, heal us, strengthen us, encourage us, and guide us, guard us, direct us, and motivate us to be all that you would have us to be. And now, Lord, and we'll give you the praise, glory, and all the honor. Bless all the churches in the Inland Empire, as well as around the planet, that are preaching and hearing the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are a grateful people. Bless them as you would bless us, and God will give you the praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, with a great big shout, we all say amen. 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 Go ahead and have a seat. If you're here for the first time, let us greet you and welcome you. Maybe you've never been at the Rock Church World Outreach Center before. And uh, you might say to yourself, well, man, that was a weird worship service. It was. Come back when we're normal. That wasn't our normal worship service. And uh, it, it'll, it'll be, as you know, if you've heard it at all, this place is 99.999% phenomenal in worshiping the Lord. And tonight, it's different. It was just going in a different direction than the word of the Lord is going tonight. And we're either going to go in that direction and fall down on our face or we're going to go according to the word of God. So a pastor comes in and then does something. He directs the church back to where it needs to be. And that's what pastoring is all about. We're... We're hearing from the voice of the Lord, and God is allowing us this great privilege to do great, mighty, wonderful things. So if you're here for the first time, we have a pamphlet brochure we want to hand to you. It only takes a moment to get it into your hands. All you got to do is raise your hand. There's some folks back here, some folks right back over here. There's some folks all the way in the back, back there. God bless you. Some more back there, some more back over there. God bless you. Back over here, back there. God bless you. Come on, let's give them a better warm welcome than that. We are happy that you're here, and uh, we praise God for that inside general information card. Now, here's what you do. Put your name, telephone number in there, and drop it in the offering basket when it goes by. Or you can go on up to the CD counter, which is on the left-hand side of the foyer. Turn it in. They'll give you a free CD of, oh, this morning's message with Pastor Dan was so good. Get a hold of that. You're going to love it. If you want tonight's message, you're going you're gonna to love it, and God's going to do great things. Is anybody... <laughs> Is anybody ready for the word of the Lord? <laughs> I believe that God wants to speak to you tonight and gave me a great message that I'm enjoying just meditating and thinking about and I'm excited about the word of the Lord as we come together. Now, in order for you to get benefit from the word of the Lord, you're going to have to pay attention. That means you're going to have to, all distractions, everything that comes across your mind and thoughts, uh, learn how to control your thinking so you're not thinking about what you're going to eat for breakfast tomorrow morning or who's, you know, what are you going to do on a day off or anything like that. You're concentrating and putting the Word of God to work in your life. When you do, let me just make this statement to you again so you hear me. When you do, you get blessed. And that's why every time we gather together, we don't just gather together, sing a few songs, and have a, you know, a Pentecostal-type experience. We come together for the word of the Lord. What's God say? Because I don't want to know what men say. I, can I tell you the truth? I really don't give a flip about what men say. I don't care about even what you say or what I say. I want to know what God says. And the only way that I'm going to govern my life, my business, manage my family, imagine my future and destiny is to know what the Lord says. And every time we gather together, that's vitally important for all of us. And so I want you to pay attention tonight because it's a wonderful message. Recently, I've just been thinking about the Lord and how many times God tells us to do things 
And we really do them sometimes when we feel like it or remember it, but we don't make it part of our life. Um, for an example, I was thinking about, I think it's Matthew, the 14th chapter. It's either Matthew, the 14th chapter, the 15th, 16th, 17th, or 18th chapter. Might be Matthew, the 20th, no, it's for, and Matthew, the 14th chapter, I think about verse number 29. We find Peter... And uh, he and his buddies are on the boat. You remember that? The disciples. And Jesus comes walking to them uh, on the water. Freaks them out. Does anybody remember the story? And so Jesus is walking on water. And he says, don't be afraid, it's me. And then Peter makes a statement to Jesus. And he says these words. And Jesus really fascinating words. He says, he says uh, Peter says, if that's you, Lord, then bid me to come to you. In other words, command me. One translation says to come to you. And verse number 29, I think it's 14th chapter of Matthew, where, where Jesus says one word, come. And you'll find that Peter gets out of the boat, does a miraculous miracle thing, walks on the water for a while until he gets his eyes off of Jesus and the storms of life. And he starts to think Jesus comes, rescues him. One word, come. Would he have gone if Jesus didn't say come? The question is a great question. Would he have gone anywhere? Would he have done anything? What if no one said, if God spoke to you about coming and doing something, it's because God has your very best interest at hand. A lot of times we don't realize, some people are really strong in the word of the Lord that are in here tonight. Some people are not so strong. Some people are still superstitious from their past and their backgrounds. They don't know anything about God. Doesn't matter where you're at. One thing you've got to understand about God, God would not tell you to do something unless it's in your best interest. You've got to understand that. God cares about you. God loves you. God wants to bring you back to a place where he can bless you. So he tells us to do stuff like Peter. Come, Peter. Peter gets out, walks on the water, defies natural nature, walks to Jesus until he gets his eyes off Jesus and starts to fail. And that's a life story for all of us. As long as we've got our eyes on Jesus, there's anything we can't accomplish. But when Jesus makes that statement, come, he's saying it to Peter so the benefit will be to Peter. And so tonight, the title of this message is kind of a cool message. When Jesus says, come. How many times in Scripture the Word of God tells us to do something because he cares about who you are? Now watch this. If you don't know what it is that he wants you to do and the benefits that you get by doing what he says, you won't do anything. Did you get that? If you don't know what it is that Jesus wants you to do and the benefits that are going to come if you do it, you won't do anything. It's just like when I made the statement earlier, this side go to that side, that side go to this side. The whole point there tonight was because there's somebody going to follow and get tremendously blessed, the others are going to just follow and not go too far at all. I'm not trying to put condemnation on you. I'm not trying to put anything on you. But when Jesus makes a statement of come, God says come and do something, he really has your best interest at hand. Listen to me. I'm going to say it again. When God says come and do something, he really has your best interest at hand. There's a bunch of things in the scripture, so I'm going to go pretty fast, and I hope you'll just keep up, make notes, and follow me, if you will, real good. When Jesus says come, number one, you'll come to a place of rest. You have to know that rest doesn't come because you get a check in the mail from your aunt who loans you money. Rest doesn't come because you're a retirement program is successful. Rest doesn't come because you worked and labored all your life and you had the right mathematics and now you can take some time off and drive around your motorhome. Rest comes and you've been designed to operate in rest through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you try to get your rest from something else other than God, you're making a mistake in life. There's no home, there's no toy, there's no motor home, there's no second, third, fourth home that's ever going to give you rest. The only thing that's going to give you rest is when you finally do something. Get out of yourself and get in Jesus. 
That's where it's at. Doesn't matter where you're at. Doesn't matter if you're in the greatest motor home, greatest house. Doesn't matter if you're in the greatest second house, third house, fourth house. Doesn't matter. Listen, the only place you're ever going to find rest is in Jesus. Listen to what the word of the Lord says in Matthew, the 11th chapter, verse number 28 says, Come to me, all you that are heavy labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What happens if you don't come? What happens if you're looking for the check in the mail? What happens if you're looking for your boss to pat you on the back? What happens if you're looking for a raise for that rest? What happens if you're looking at the checking account or the savings account to find your rest in the future? And here's the mistake of so many Christians, even powerful and strong Christians, they never find their rest in Jesus. They're always looking somewhere else to find their rest. And Jesus says, come to me. All of you that are labor and heavy laden, in other words, you got the weight of the world on you. Don't just come to me because everything's cool. I'm talking about when you got the weight of the world on you. He says this is a statement you got to do. And he says his promise is I will give you rest. When you follow his instructions, you will find the rest. And what we do is we don't do that. Man, we're looking for everything. If I just find the right place to live, if I just get the, somebody to like me, if I can just have the right husband, if my husband just treated me right, or if my wife just treated me right, or if I just had this or I just had that, I mean it, it'll be just great if I could just accomplish this recently in starting up my business. I've just been so frustrated because I want to get going. You know, I've got a whole bunch of plans and with cities and different cities and different plans and things ahead of me and I'm waiting for somebody to give me the approval, go, give me the green flag, I want to move on and get going and I, I can't get it right now. It doesn't happen, maybe it'll happen next week, two weeks from now, but there's something, you know, recently I just ministered a great subject called patience, I ministered it because I needed to hear it. Great message, by the way. But in order for me to find rest, it's not going to be on whether or not I get the city approval or don't get a city approval. For me, for an example, it's whether or not I follow God. God says, come to me when all the world is on your shoulders. Come to me. Come to me. Don't go anywhere else. Come to me. And I'll give you rest. Number two, when Jesus says come, I like this one. You're going to come to a place of cleansing. I want you to know something. You'll never get anything done until God cleanses you. Tonight, for some of you, you need to be washed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You haven't really got that. You got Jesus in your head. You haven't been washed of your sins yet. And we'll take, that there, take care of that, but I want you to hear what I'm going to say to you. You will never get anything, never go anywhere, never be anything, never do anything until you have a relationship with God. In your relationship with God, you have got to be cleansed. That's why Jesus went to the cross and died in his blood, washes away your sins. You know why? So that you can have a relationship now with the Father God because God didn't have a relationship with people who were unholy. And you need to be cleansed. And you'll find when you come to God, there's a cleansing element that takes place. This is great verse in Isaiah, the first chapter, verse number 18. Go there in your Old Testament, Isaiah 1, verse number 18. Isaiah 1, verse number 18. And it starts off in verse number 18. It says, come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet. In other words, man, your high activity in, in sins. They shall be white as snow. Though you're red like crimson, they shall be like wool. In other words, if you come to God, God will wash you. God will cleanse you. You can have a relationship with the Father God. You could speak to him and he'll speak to you. He can open doors that no man can open and close doors. No man can close. Why? Because you came to him. Why? Because you are cleansed by the blood of the Lord, Jesus Christ. All because you didn't sit back and do nothing. All because you did something, you came. Some of you need to tonight come to Jesus. We're talking about when Jesus says come. Number three, you'll come to a place of safety. I love this. We're always looking for a place of safety, aren't we? 
I mean, we are very insecure people. Does anybody remember reading that, that uh, meteorite that hit the uh, Russian area and we all went, oh my goodness. Then you saw the video on it and you saw the explosion, you saw the lights and it blew out all the windows and a thousand people end up in, 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 inside a hospital. And, the, and last week we read about that and that thing was just a little teeny rock compared to what's out there. I don't know about you, but I need to be in a place of safety. And I found that safety only comes with Jesus Christ. And he tells you to do something. Now, what if you don't do it? It's like going by, we need rest, but what if you don't come to him? Well, you know, I need to be cleansed, but what if you don't come to him? Well, I need safety. Guess what? What if you don't come to him? You don't get it. In Genesis, the seventh chapter, first chapter, first book in the Bible, in Genesis, the seventh chapter, let's take a look at it together. In Genesis, the seventh chapter, verse number one, says these words. Then the Lord said to Noah, come into the ark. You know, he's still saying that today. The ark was a place of safety, a refuge, a place of getting away from all the trash that's going to happen to the world. The world was on a mode of devastation, failure. And he was going to protect them, come into the ark. You know what the ark is today? In the loving arms of Jesus. That's the ark. And the same thing is being said today every day. If you want to come into a place of safety, get out of the world and get into Jesus. But you're going to have to, listen to this, come into that safe place, Jesus. We're talking about a wonderful subject called what Jesus says, come. Number one, rest. Number two, cleansing. Number three, safety. Number four, I love this one, godly relationships. You say, what does that mean, godly relationships? Who you are in relationship with will determine where you go in your future. Wait a minute. Did you hear hear what I said? Who you are in relationship today, tomorrow and next week, next month, next year, will determine who you are and where you go and what you do in your future. Everything is built on relationships. Relationships that are godly relationships, I tell you, are that which brings great blessings to the people around them. I remember a time when Deborah went to Africa and she paid for the trip herself. It took four or five of our ministers in, from the Rock Church to Africa on her trip to Africa. And they went to different countries. You've heard Deborah mention some of the countries they went to and some of the stories and illustrations. And the people that went got to go because someone paid it. Someone was there. Someone was known. Some, and they came along with Deborah to Africa. If it wasn't for Deborah motivating and instigating and paying for this trip, it would have never happened. It's in the relationship you get to do something with God. And most people are so dumb, they break relationships that are good for them. Did you know that in a church that you have a relationship in, that's where you get blessed? You are what you are today because who you hung around with in church and who you worshiped with. And people are so easy to throw that relationship away when it's in that relationship that opens the doors for tomorrow. Is anybody following me? It's so true. I can't tell you how many people have said, I'm going to go do my own thing. And man, when they were under the covering, when they had a relationship, they were blessed out of their socks. They went out there by themselves because they didn't realize how important it was to have godly relationships. And guess what happened? They fell on their faces and lost their families and lost it all, all because they no longer had the godly relationships they had when they were in the position of getting blessed. Sometimes when we get blessed, we don't think very good. Is anybody listening to me tonight? Godly relationships. Blessings. And that's what this is really all about. I want to take you to the scripture on that in Numbers, the 10th chapter, verse number 29. Moses' father-in-law. 
Moses is going to take the children of Israel in the promised land. He speaks to his father-in-law. Let me read you the verse, if I may. The Numbers, the 10th chapter, verse number 29. Remember, we're talking about come to a place of godly relationship. Why? Because there's God saying come. And Moses said to Hodab, the son of Real, the Midianite, not an Israelite, a Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, we are setting out for a place in which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Come with us and we will treat you well. The Lord has promised good things to Israel. In other words, because you're in relationship with Israel, you'll get blessed because Israel's blessed. Have you ever thought about this house as being blessed? And because it's blessed, you will get blessed. Your kids will get blessed. Your homes will get blessed. Your job will get blessed. Because you hanging around that which is blessed. Called godly relationships. We underestimate that. And the other side of the coin, every person that's ever been in prison will tell you they got there because they had ungodly relationships. Who you hang around with, what you associate with is going to determine where you're going to be and what you're going to do tomorrow. And if you're getting blessed, why leave? If you're getting blessed, why break that godly relationship? That doesn't even make sense to me. Moses' father-in-law, if you keep reading, says, listen, I'm not doing that. I'm going back to find my own relatives. Moses talks him into going, and man, he got blessed. Jeez. All because that word, come. See, there's a place where you have godly relationships, and if you come to that place, you get blessed. How many have ever been around a godly person, gotten blessed? Just because you're hanging around them. You hang around me, you're going to get blessed. I get blessed. Are you following me? I'm blessed. I'm not just saying that in hopes. I'm so blessed it makes me crazy to think about how blessed I am. I can't even imagine being blessed as much as I'm blessed. And I have just started. Hang around me and guess what you're going to get? Blessed. Because I'm not going anywhere except being blessed. That's the way it's going to be, period. Go do whatever you want to do, but don't ever break a godly relationship. Godly relationships are vitally important to your future because as people are blessed, you get blessed. Stop thinking about those two guys that got those gift certificates tonight, just making the point again. Everybody else is in this place. Everybody else is getting greeted. Everybody else is getting blessed, but they got really blessed. If they hadn't done what they did, they'd have never been really blessed. Are you following me? Same exact thing, same exact principle. We miss it all the time. Number five, we're talking about when Jesus says come. Number five, I love this one. It come to a place of supernatural provision. I need to, when God says come, I want you to know something. He's going to take me to a place of supernatural provision. I need super, I don't need just provision. Anybody can have provision. You can be on welfare for the rest of your life. The government will take care of you. It's committed to do that. I'm just here telling you, listen to this. I don't want just government provision. I want super, I don't want to hang around. I don't want to just get government provision. I want supernatural provision. You and I need to realize that when God tells you to do something and tells you to come to a place, there's supernatural provision waiting for you. In Isaiah the 55, Isaiah 55, verse number one, you, you got your Bible. Let's just pop over there. Isaiah 55, verse number one, it says, Ho! Oh, everyone who thirsts comes to the water. Have you ever wanted anything? Ever had a desire? Come on. Don't just look at me. Think about it for a moment. You ever had a desire? You ever said, man, I really would like to have something. I really 
want, the, and, and you think, ah, I can never get that. Listen to what God says. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. What's he talking about? Come to the waters. What if you don't go to the waters? You don't get the thirst quenched. The waters being the Holy Spirit of God. Come to where God's at. And you will have no money. He doesn't say back off and sit down. You're worthless. You're no good. If you have no money, guess what he says to you? Come. <coughs> Buy and eat. Yes, come. Buy wine and milk without money and without price. You say, wait a minute. I have no money. How can I buy anything? You get everything you'll ever need from the one who gives it. His name is God Almighty. His name is Jesus. And we fail to understand there's supernatural provision. He didn't say you that have money get provided for. You buy the milk, you buy the wine, you buy the... If you keep reading that, man, it's all about you getting when you don't have anything because you came to the right place and the right place is God himself. Is anybody listening? Last one for tonight. We're talking about a wonderful subject. When Jesus says come, he comes to a place, and this is so important for us, of celebration. That's why I wouldn't let you stay on that note when I walk to this platform tonight. We're on a place of celebration. Celebration means there's a party. I want you to know something. Did you know that the greatest partier in the world is God? Loves parties. Loves families to get together. Loves them to barbecue. Loves them to eat too much. Loves them to get together, play games. God wants to, he had to make sure Israel that was uptight. He had to schedule in celebrations for them all the time. You go this long, you have a celebration. You go this long, you have a celebration. You go this long, you have a celebration. He put it in the law because they're all uptight. Oh, we're going to just do God, do, do God. God said, you're going to do God, you're going to celebrate. I want you to know something. Life is a celebration to him that has entered into the rest of God. Life ought to be a celebration. Life ought to be exciting. Life ought to be great. The future ought to look better than ever before. There's things to obtain, things to have. They don't have you, but you have them. Then you can give them away to the glory of God because you're in a celebration mode. God wants you to celebrate. He is a party man. I'm not talking about drunken, perverted, weird parties. I'm talking about that's not a party at all. That's just a, 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 a reproduction of the pit of hell. I'm talking about really getting together and celebrating the goodness of God. And man, in the Old Testament, that meant lots of food. That meant a lot of other stuff, too. I won't tell you because you go out and get drunk. God's not a killjoy. He's full of joy. It's celebration. In the New Testament, there's a wedding feast. Oh, if you're born of the Spirit of God, you're going to have one in heaven. Found in Matthew 22, verse number 4, where they sent out invitations and people denied them and didn't pay any attention to them said there's a wedding feast coming. Nobody cared. And, but in verse number four, it says, again, he sent out other servants saying, tell those who are invited, see that I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fatted cattle to, are killed and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. <laughs> Man, this is a wedding you don't want to miss. And you know darn well the wedding I'm talking about is between you and Jesus. And there's a wedding feast you don't want to miss. Those that didn't care, 
made light of it, the Bible says. Some thought of it as not important. Others made excuses, and God went and got those that would see it as a great thing. God is a God of celebration. And we can miss the celebration, my friends, every time because we don't come to where God's at to celebrate. Tonight, very important for all of us, and I'll close with this. That when Jesus says and God says, come, you come for rest. If you don't come, you don't get the rest. You come for cleansing because you screwed up and you need God's love to wash away all the mess so that you can have a relationship with the Father of God again. You come for safety. There's a place to hide. There's a place to nestle into under the wings of the Most High. A place of safety for you and I a place of godly relationships that take us further than we've ever gone before because we're associated with a place that's blessed. And then supernatural provision. When he says come, he's not telling you just to come. He's telling you, man, there's supernatural provision waiting for you and I. And then he says, come and celebrate. There's a wedding feast. You'll never participate in the feast until... You come. It doesn't happen to anybody until you get up and make it happen in your life. Tonight, you heard the word of God because you came to hear the word of God. The word of God, listen to this, will bless you over and over and over. You could have stayed home on the couch you could have made it an excuse. You could have said, forget it. I've been in church enough. I've volunteered. I've given myself. I heard Pastor Dan. It was a great message. I, I just want to sit on a couch. I just want to do nothing. But I'm here to tell you something. You came because Jesus said so. And now you know the reason for coming because you will get blessed if you come when Jesus says to come. But I want you that are not right with God to come and get right with God. And you're not right with God, you know it. Here's what you've been doing. You've been screwing around. You've been half in, half out. You've been doing things that make you feel guilty. You've been doing things you know is wrong. You don't even feel like you ought to be in church because you've been messing around too much because you're out of sync with God. And I'm telling you one word, if you don't come, you'll never get cleansed, you'll never have the rest, you'll never get the supernatural provision, you'll never have a future. You gotta come. What do I mean by that? That means you're gonna grab a hold of your coat, purse, sweater, Bible friend, Nobody's going to tell you any more than that. You're going to get out of your seat, get in the aisle, stand right here in front of me. We're going to pray for you. If you don't come, you'll miss the celebration. There's a wedding feast. You don't get to go to heaven because you're a nice person. Good person, you get to go to heaven because you're born of the Spirit of God. If you're not born of the Spirit of God, you're out of sync with God. Yes, do I know you know who Jesus is? Of course you know who Jesus is. You celebrate Christmas and Easter every year of your life. There's no doubt about it. But even the devil knows who Jesus is. Come on, just stand right here. Where's my ushers? And you know you need to come and give your life to Jesus. You need to stop messing around. Get out of your seat. Get up here right now. Get your stuff. Get up here. If you don't come, you're going to miss it. Woo. Nobody clap. Come on. If you don't come, you're going to miss it. Just get out of your seat and come. You're coming to Jesus. No weird stuff, no hype, no nothing. You're just coming to Jesus. 
You just get out of your seat, get your coat, purse, sweater, Bible, get whatever you came with. Bring a friend if you need a friend. Get out of your seat. Get up here. Tonight you're coming to Jesus. And it's time for you to do this. Bring a friend if you need to bring a friend. But get out of your seat and get down here. And I know there's more of you that need to come. Tonight the call is you need to be born again, headed for heaven and denying your presence in hell. And if you don't come, you're going to go to hell. And somebody needs to tell you that. Somebody need, need to play games with you any longer. We're not here because we're afraid of people's faces and we're afraid to do our jobs because we're afraid to run people out of here. We're here to tell you the truth. You're going to die and go to hell if you don't get out of your seat and come. We'll wait for you. Everybody that ever got blessed had to come. Tonight is your night. They're still coming. We'll wait for you. The Bible says no one comes to the Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Before your very eyes is a move of the Spirit of God. Before your very eyes is a move of the Spirit of God. You come. I know there's more. They're still coming. Just let the Spirit of God deal with people's hearts. We don't have to say anything. We don't have to do anything. I know there's a dozen more of you that need to come tonight. A, can you imagine me saying that? A dozen more. And you know who you are. Whether you come or don't come is your business, but you need to come. Come on. If I didn't embarrass them, I won't embarrass you. Get up, get your stuff, check with your neighbor, and come. There's 11 more of you. You know if you're not right with God.
you're going to miss it if you hesitate any longer. And that would be a shame. Ten of you. There's nine of you. Come on. There's eight of you. God told me to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. There's seven of you. There's six of you. There's five of you. There's five of you.
four of you. There's three of you. There's two of you. There's one of you. So be it. God has fulfilled it. Thank you for coming. You're a tough one to get, but thank God you came. I don't know if I can put my hands down here. I think I'm stuck in this spot. You ought to give the Lord a great big praise. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. We're so conditioned to have noise instead of just allowing the presence of the Holy Spirit. We have to have tongues and interpretations and prophecy when the greatest move of the Holy Spirit is what we see right before our very eyes. All of you in front, look over here. This is Pastor Joel. Joel is a great guy. He's going to pray with you, give you some free stuff, tell you about a program we have that will help you get strong in Jesus. So you don't go back doing the same old stuff, but we'll help you get out of that stuff, help you get strong in the Lord. I need all the SPTs up here. If you're an SPT in here, just get up here. I want you all to make a left turn, follow Pastor Joel right over that way. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big praise. <laughs>